Welcome back everyone to The Xamarin Show. I'm your host, James Montemagno, and today I'm gonna to talk about monetization of your mobile applications for iOS and Android. Now, specifically, there's a lot of different ways of monetizing your applications. You may think about introducing in-app purchases, or maybe having subscriptions uh, part of your application, uh, or you may wanna think of an alternative way of monetizing your application, often through advertisements. Now, there are several different ad um, networks out there, but the easiest one that is cross-platform has to be Google's AdMob. They introduce multiple types of ads for your application. They could be banner ads, uh, interestrial ads that kind of pop up, and video ads uh, for your applications. Now, what we're gonna do today is build out uh, a full uh, application where we're gonna introduce some ads. And this application is gonna be a Xamarin Forms application. And in the few minutes that we have here on the Xamarin Show, we're just gonna do it for Android. And it'll be a very similar process for iOS. And I'll link to my full blog post in the show notes. Now, let's go ahead and get started building our application. Uh, and the first thing that we're gonna do is head over to Visual Studio uh, and AdMob itself. So when you go to AdMob, which is um, admob.com, uh, that's Google's AdMob. And essentially, this will be a list of all of your applications that you have. When you go ahead and add an application, it'll ask you if you've already published an app on the Google Play Store uh, or the Apple App Store. So if you hit yes here, for instance, you can go and search for an application. Uh, now, if you haven't, you can actually just manually enter your application name, and you'll need to set up a separate app for both iOS and Android. Uh, now, I've gone ahead and already added my application that we're going to use today, which is an application uh, that's my plugins for Xamarin demo application. Uh, so this uh, is on the App Store for Android today, and this essentially allows you to test out all the different uh, plugins for Xamarin. So the first thing that we want to do is notice that this app has a bunch of different settings for it. We have add units, blocking controls, and app settings. So what we're going to do here is go into add units, and we're going to say add an add unit. Now this allows you to do a bunch of different things um, to, for the type of ad that you want to integrate. The easiest and most simplistic ad to add is the banner ad. And so this is something that appears on the top or the bottom of the screen, and it automatically refreshes. This is probably what you're most familiar with when you've uh, seen ads and applications. Uh, there's interstitials, which that's how you pronounce it. I'm pretty sure I always pronounce it different and wrong every time. Reward videos and native ads. Uh, so that's something that is nice because as video ads, it appears inline in like a scrolling list. It's also optional. So let's go ahead and just do a banner ad. That's the one uh, I introduce into all my applications. So here you can specify if you want text or image, and you can even uh, set a refresh rate. Uh, you can have it manually for so many seconds or just let Google optimize it or not refresh at all if you just want one ad. And then what you'll need to do is just give it an ad unit name. So we'll just say Xamarin Show Test Ad. This is a unique identifier, and that's what you really want to kind of remember. So like when you go and look at reports, that's what you're going to note. We're going to go ahead and save. Now this banner ad uh, is recommended that you create one different ad unit for every page or every control that you put. So if you have three pages that are each displaying an ad, you would add three of these into your application. Now this page is really important, and often they even tell you to say, hey, email me the instructions. So what we need to do here is make sure that we note our app, app ID, which is the app ID for this uh, app, and that's always gonna be the same, and then the add unit ID. Specifically, they're very similar, but one has a little uh, squiggly and one has a slash in it, and that's what we're gonna do. So let's hop over to the application here. And this app, is, like I said, is a Xamarin Forms app. So what I have over here is my, uh, my shared code. This could be a portable class library, .NET standard library, or a shared project, doesn't matter. I also have my Android and my iOS uh, and my UWP application there that's referencing it. So ideally what we wanna do, this is the perfect use case for a custom control with a custom renderer because the added uh, view is not anything that exists in Xamarin Forms. In fact, since there's so many different ways and different platforms for integrating ads into applications, it makes no sense for it to be part of Xamarin Forms itself. Now, if you're integrating this in just an Android or just an iOS application, you can find the guidelines of how to essentially insert that into your storyboard or your UI view controller, or your fragment or activity really easily, but most of the code here is exactly the same. So here's what we're gonna do. 
is the first thing that we're gonna do is inside of our shared code, we're gonna create a custom control, which is an add control view. It's actually very simple. There's really no data binding or anything special on it at all that we're gonna add into here because it's just one view and one add unit of my page. And this is gonna inherit from Xamarin Forms view. This means that it allows you to still access all the properties of a normal view uh, here, uh, but it, it just allows us to essentially add that into our XAML page. And in fact, just with that code, we can come into our XAML page, which is our home page, and add it in. So what we'll first wanna do is say, hey, we wanna add this into our, our uh, page here. So right up top, we have a new XMLNS namespace that's pointing specifically to my controls. We can see that I'm putting this into a grid. Uh, and what I'm doing is saying, the list view up top is full, and uh, we'll set the row height to auto for the ad. So list view is gonna expand as much as possible, and the ad is on the bottom. Now a few things to note here, because ads are able to fill up the entire length essentially of the screen, so you don't want any spacing or any padding around the actual view. So be aware of that. For some reason your ad's not showing up, it's probably because you have additional spacing and it can't calculate the size of where it needs to be. So down the bottom, uh, in the bottom of my list, I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna say ads, there's my ad view control, and I can set additional pop properties here such as red, and um, I can do uh, grid, dot row equals one, there we go. So if I wanna fill the entire background here to red, we'd be good to go. Now we have our ad in our shared code, in our shared view, now we actually wanna implement some code. So the first thing that we wanna do is spend the rest of our time in our Android application. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click and manage NuGets for my Android app. And I'm gonna type in um, Google Ads, there we go. Now a few different ads will come up. There's Google Play Services Ads and Google Play Services Ads Lite. Now these uh, are very similar, but different in a way. Google Play Service Ads bundles up all of kind of the Google Play um, Services and Ads SDK into your application. And it has a bunch more dependencies over here, so we can see that it's using Ads Lite, it's using Base, Basement Clear, uh, Gas. It's using a bunch of a bunch of different libraries of Google Play services, and it's adding a lot more into your application. So if your application is kind of if you're aware of of wanting to introduce ads but not increase the size of your application, you can look into Ads Lite. Now the difference here is that Google Play services has to be installed and up to date um, on uh, the actual platform where the normal ads SDK does not require it at all. But there's a lot less dependencies. All it is required is just on basement. So there's no additional dependencies, uh, which is nice. So I like ads light because I know I'm deploying to Google Play. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and install the actual uh, NuGet here. Now what's nice about this is if I go over to um, components.xamarin.com, which is where all of our components are, and I search for ads for instance, I can look at the, the ads SDK and it'll tell me specifically how to get started and how to monetize my application inside of here. So there's a getting started wizard. And this is what we're actually going to make sure we follow today. So the, uh, the Google Play services ads and ads light uh, are, are exactly the same setup here. There's actually no difference in code between implementing ads and ads light. And that's very important when it comes to just banner ads. So over here, we're gonna go ahead and accept the ads light SDK um, into Visual Studio. There we go, so it's gonna go ahead and install that really quick. And we're gonna go ahead and browse through a few things that we need to add into our application. The first thing is that we need to make sure that we update and use a few different permissions, internet and access network state. So we can go ahead and copy these. These are assembly exports that are put into the Android or you can manually add them into the Android manifest. So if we come over here and actually right click on my Android project, we can go down and see all of our different properties. So here we have access network state, and we additionally have checked um, bup, 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 internet. So those two are good to go. It also is gonna tell us here that we need to introduce this activity and some additional metadata uh, into our ads, uh, into our uh, sorry Android manifest file. So what I'm gonna do here is go ahead and come into my uh, Android application, properties, Android manifest. And this is what's being visualized here uh, in this in, in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that. What we're gonna see here is that I have gone ahead and added that code snippet right here. So essentially 
when someone presses on it, this ad activity has to start. So it's saying, hey, there is this ad activity inside my application, and that's what I want to do. There's a translucent theme to it. So essentially, it's copy-paste from the documentation. And that's it. The rest of it is kind of following through the sample and setting it up. So let's do that. So now what we have essentially is our actual ad uh, control view that's going to be in our XAML. And what we want to use here is the custom renderer. So like I mentioned, a custom renderer is great here because this is going to enable us to essentially implement whatever type of ads we want on each platform. So AdMob here you might use something different on UWP or even on iOS. So what we want to do now is start to integrate the Google Play Services Ads SDK for AdMob into our Android application so we can get it running on the device. So let's go ahead and hop over back into Visual Studio and see what that looks like. So here's that XAML page again. But what we want to do now is go into our Android project, and that's where we're going to spend the rest of our time. Here, I'm going to come into a, uh, my Android project and add a new class that I'm calling the Add View Renderer. So essentially here, this is the Add View Renderer. So I would then implement this on iOS or on UWP. Um, to get the different ad support that I wanted. It's actually very minimal code that you have to write out to get an ad unit displaying on the screen. Uh, and uh, I actually have a blog post for iOS that I'll link in the show notes below. So here, uh, we're going to export the renderer. And this is going to be of the type of my custom control and then ad of my ad view renderer. So this will tell Xamarin Forms that, hey, this is what I want to actually display. So the first thing we need to do is say that, hey, I'm a view renderer. There we go. And what's nice about this is that you can say, for this type of Xamarin Forms control, this is the native view that I want to display. So I'm going to say controls dot add control view, and then I'm going to say I am of type. Let's go ahead and drop that down to a new line really quick so we can read it. And I am of type add view. Now this add view specifically is coming from Android.gms.ads, which is a namespace that I brought up right here that just lit up which is coming from the Google Play Services SDK. So now we need to go ahead and add a few uh, um, variables here. So the first thing is that it's gonna, we're going to put in our add unit ID. There we go. And this is going to be a string that is coming from AdMob. So remember when I told you that these two different things are really important, the add ID, app ID and add unit ID? Well, this is the first add unit ID. We're going to go ahead and paste that in there. Now, if you have multiple screens of your application, you're going to want to have some switch case. You're going to maybe have an attached property where you can set that. But since I only have one ad unit, I'm just going to put it right into here. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create an ad size. So the ad size specifically is going to tell um, the Google Play uh, AdMob SDK what type of banner to, or do I want to display. There's banners, um, there's full banners, there's large banners, there's leaderboards, medium rectangles, all sorts of different shapes and sizes. Uh, and you can read the documentation on what that is. I use the smart banner. The smart banner will fill the width as much as humanly possible, and it will adjust the height of the actual ad automatically based on the type of device it is. So if it's a phone or a tablet or a TV or something like that. The next thing we want to do is actually say, what our ad view is. So our ad view here is what we're actually going to return to Xamarin Forms to set the native control. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply create an ad view, and I'm going to say create ad view. There we go. And at some point from this method, we're going to return that ad view that I created earlier. So that's what we're going to do at the end. Now this is a method essentially that will get called when I want to create it locally. So if I've already created the ad view, I'm just going to say, if it's not null, let's go ahead and just return the ad view. There we go. Else, now we need to initialize it. Cool. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say add view equals new, you guessed it, add view, and we need to pass it a context. So in Xamarin Forms, you can just say forms.context, and it'll have the current context of the application or activity. Now what we need to do is fill in a few properties. So we'll say add view dot. And there's a bunch of different properties that you need to set, but specifically there are going to be three properties that we need to actually lay down before we can load a view. And the first one is our ad size, which we've already specified uh, earlier, which is our ad size. We also need to identify our add unit, add unit ID. That is that add unit ID as we also specified earlier. Additionally now, we need to actually give this view a way of knowing how to inflate, essentially. And we do that in the world of Android with layout parameters. 
So we're going to create a, a view uh, add params, and we're going to say new linear layout dot layout params. We're going to fill this in with layout params dot um, wrap content for both the width and the height. So this will give it the nice dynamic uh, height that it needs and the width. There we go. Now that add view here, we can simply say layout params equals add params. Perfect. Now we're almost ready to go. All we need to do is load our actual add. So what we can do here is we can come in and say uh, add view dot load add, and we need to pass it in an add request. That's what it's requiring here. Now, how we create that is with an add request builder. So as you'd expect, that's a new add request dot builder here. The builder pattern allows us to essentially uh, specify additional um, items on top of this. So here I can say add test device, add keyword. Um, I can add additional information about my user if I know it, like birthday or, or location, things like that. If you already have that information, I have proper permission to use it. Uh, the add test device is really nice when you actually want to put it on one of your test devices, but don't want to actually um, be displaying ads um, because you, know, you don't want to do that on a test device and break any agreements that you have with AdMob. But I'm just going to go ahead and put it on a simulator, or an emulator, I should say, and the emulators will automatically display a test ad for me. So I'm just going to say, build. Perfect. That's it. I've essentially loaded an ad right there. Done. Now all I need to do is tell Xamarin.Forms how to actually load this ad. So I'm going to override the on element changed. There we go. And what we need to do is this method here will get called and it'll give us some, um, some changed event arguments to say, hey, it's time for you to actually create and set your native view. So I'm going to say if the control equals null, let's go ahead and create it. So I'm going to say create native, sorry, oops, create add view there we go and then set native control we're going to set it to our add view there we go so this will then tell xamarin forms how to load it up how to populate it and essentially be ready to go there's one final thing that we have which is the app id over here remember i told you this app id was equally as important as the add unit id this one's always the same for the specific ad that i or app that i created in ad mob but we need to set it in our main activity. We'll need to bring in the using Android GMS.ads namespace. And before we load our application, what we want to do here is simply say mobile ads dot initialize with our application context and pass it that string. Perfect. There we have it. Now all I need to do now is simply run it on my device or on my actual emulator. So what we're going to see here is that it's going to build up, compile, make sure that it has all of my different Android support libraries, uh, all of my additional services here um, that are installed, and then compile up my app. Now, a few things to note while this is loading is that I've upgraded all of my actual Android support libraries to version 25 plus, and I actually have another Xamarin Show Snack Pack edition showing you how to do that. That way you get to use the latest and greatest versions uh, of the Android support libraries and of the Google Play services. So here we go. So now I'm going to go ahead and deploy on our device. We'll give it a second here. And ideally what we want to see is an add a unit on the bottom of our list view. So there is, you saw our red background. So maybe you'll have like a loading ad or something like that. And there we go. We now see our test uh, ad coming from AdMob, just like that. Now notice that it's also filling the entire width and the height of everything going on here. So on a normal ad, it would fill up the entire space if possible. If we come in and change that here, actually in our add view renderer, add control renderer, I should say, and I say that I just want a banner, and we go ahead and redeploy it, what we'll see is it'll look a little bit different on that control on the bottom. So we'll go ahead and make the changes here and redeploy it to our um, emulator. There we go. We'll see the entire um, background will be red again, but notice that it didn't actually fill the rest of the space here. So if you have a specific area of your um, application where you just have 320 by 50 here, that is the ad size that's going on from AdMob. When I set it back to the smart banner, it's going to know that it's going to need to display it. 
Now, it's really important to remember that in this home control, there's no padding, no spacing around this actual grid. So be aware that I've set it here to zero, which is why the smart banner works. It doesn't have any padding, so it's able to fill the entire area of the screen. It's really important. So if for some reason you don't see it, set the background color, make sure it's coming up. There you go. And in just a few minutes, actually, by installing a NuGet, creating a custom control with the renderer, and writing a few lines of code, we have an ad coming in from Google AdMob into our Android application. Now we can go ahead and implement very similar code using AdMob or other um, ad integrations for iOS and of course UWP too. So you can have this ad control in a few lines of code coming into all of your applications. And there you have it, really just that simple of how to start monetizing your application. Now of course you can take it to the next level and actually introduce in-app purchases to maybe remove ads, start subscriptions, and then put in a little bit more logic to hide and display or not even load that ad at all based on what your user's in-app purchase date is. I'll add additional um, links into the show notes for some of my plugins, such as in-app billing, which simplifies the in-app purchase process just to a few lines of code. So until next time, I'm James Montemagno. This has been The Xamarin Show, and don't forget to subscribe right up there or over there, wherever they put it on the page, to The Xamarin Show so you get weekly updates of all the latest and greatest for The Xamarin Show right here on Channel 9.